Hello, I'm glad you could join me in my study. This week, I've been preparing my opening speech for an upcoming debate with Eric Wielenberg on whether theism or atheism provides the best account for objective moral values and duties. Eric Wielenberg is a professor of philosophy who has emerged as, I think, the most prominent critic of theistic-based ethics. In his book, Robust Ethics, he uh, launches extensive criticisms of theories of ethics which would ground ethics in God's nature and commands, such as Robert Adams' divine command theory of ethics. More than that, Wielenberg offers his own positive account of what he calls godless normative realism. This is a version of what I've called in my published work atheistic moral Platonism. Wielenberg believes that moral values are abstract objects of some sort, properties or states of affairs, um, which then supervene or uh, come to bear upon physical states of affairs in the world. As such, I think that this alternative to theism is open to all of the objections that I've lodged in my work against atheistic moral Platonism. First, that what it postulates is just unintelligible. I have a great deal of difficulty even understanding what it means to say that there are objective moral uh, values or duties as abstract objects akin to mathematical objects. But Wielenberg's account is even worse because on his godless normative realism, he claims that even though these abstract moral objects are causally impotent, physical states of affairs are causally related to them and cause them to be instantiated in the physical world. Now, this is to postulate a relationship between physical objects and abstract objects, which is altogether mysterious and goes beyond the bounds of anything that modern science would tell us about the natural properties and dispositions of physical objects. And it's interesting to me that in order to make his view plausible, what does Wielenberg appeal to? He appeals to theism. He appeals to God's relationship to the world of conserving the world in being as an analogy to the causal relationship between physical objects and the abstract moral objects that they cause to be instantiated. Well, this will not endear him to his fellow atheist theorists who would say that this is trying to explain the obscure by the more obscure, but even for theists, while we do believe that God has such a causal relationship to the world, there is no such relationship of physical objects to an abstract uh, realm of objects. So it's difficult to even make sense of this theory metaphysically speaking. In addition to that, I've argued that atheistic moral Platonism has difficulty giving a good account of moral duties or obligations. Wielenberg attempts to derive moral obligations from what he would call normative moral reasons. If you have better reasons for a certain action than otherwise, then that is what you ought to do. Now, it would seem to me that this at best provides a sort of conditional obligation. That is to say, if you're interested in acting morally, then that is what you ought to do. But why act morally? Morality ought to lay on us an unconditional obligation to do this or that, and not merely a conditional obligation for those who are interested in acting morally. And Wielenberg's theory does not do as well as theism in providing a basis for such an unconditional moral obligation, uh, an obligation which would often come into conflict with prudential values and self-interest. Finally, I've argued that atheistic moral Platonism 
has difficulty in explaining the reliability of our cognitive faculties in knowing moral values and duties. This abstract realm is causally impotent to impact our beliefs uh, and the evolution of our moral beliefs. Indeed, on evolutionary theory, there is no supervising uh, designer of our moral beliefs. They are driven simply by their survival value. And since the evolutionary processes that have shaped our cognitive faculties are not aimed at truth, but aimed merely at survival, it's difficult to see why we would think that we have reliable moral beliefs. Wielenberg attempts to answer this by appealing to a sort of third factor, saying that our um, moral beliefs are caused by the same cognitive faculties that instantiate these abstract moral values. But it seems to me that that doesn't explain why our moral beliefs would be reliable, why it would uh, explain that we have true moral beliefs rather than moral beliefs that simply are conducive to survival. So these will be some of the issues that will be brought up in our forthcoming debate, and I'm looking forward to dialoguing with Eric Wielenberg on these subjects.